Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. And what I've got in front of me today are the Russian Empire troops from Gloom Trench. Now, these fellows are going to come along as part of a Kickstarter, which is coming up very quickly in mid-February. So I'll make sure that there is a link to the backer kit for that in the description. Now, same as the British stuff, these are 3D prints, uh, but there are licensed printers for the Fickle Dice stuff all around the world, including New Zealand. So any of my Kiwi pals down there, you want some uh, <laughs> Gloom Trench British Empire troops, go look those up. I'll make sure there's links in the description. Now what I'm showing you today is historically inspired rather than historically accurate, because of course the Great War didn't continue until 1926, thank goodness. So what I've chosen here is to kind of follow along some of the design elements of the Imperial Russian Army, and some of them I've just made up. So thanks to Fickle Dice for letting me have these guys ahead of schedule so I can have a bit of a play around. All of the paints will be listed in the description below. Let's get started. So first things first, whether you have printed these yourself or later on ordered them and had them printed for you, first thing to do after assembly is to prime them. Now I've used here the Premium Grey, it's a Vallejo Rattle Can Primer. Uh, I always find it really useful. The actual primer color we're going to use doesn't matter too much though. All that you really want is something which is going to be fairly light, so even a bone color uh, will work perfectly well here. Anything medium to light, it's not going to matter. I've just used grey because I had it to hand. Now we'll start with the basic color of his uniform. For this I'm going to use Vallejo's German Camo Beige World War II to get its full name. Um, I'm going to use quite a stiff bristle brush here because I really want to just jam it into uh, where it's going to go. You can be as messy as you like with this. You'll see it covers fairly well. Uh, any areas like his legs where he's wrapped himself around a couple of times, just go for it. You know, you, you cannot get this wrong. Just paint as much of this as you can reach in German camo beige. You'll find in most areas, uh, one coat will do the job, but it is up to you. If you reckon it looks a little bit uh, anemic, you can come back and give it a second. Don't forget sections on the back where the cape is ripped and jam some through there as well. Now the next layer up we'll paint is his skin. For this I'm actually using the Army Painter's Tanned Flesh. Um, I quite like this because we're going to shade all of this dude in a brown later. Um, and Tanned Flesh has just a little bit more reddish warmth to it, which looks quite good under a brown shade. Now you'll see on some of the miniatures they'll have holes in the backs of his gloves. Just bap in a little bit of this here so that uh, we can paint around this. Show his hands poking through later. And some of these miniatures are going to have big gaps in their trousers. Now, on the other fellas I painted, these gaps were a little bit smaller. Uh, so I left them looking like he had patched his trousers. But on this guy, uh, let's play it up a little. Let's give him a hole. And now we'll use some beige brown and paint in any wooden details. So this will be predominantly his uh, rifle. Some fellows are going to have entrenching tools and stuff like that. Um, you can paint this in with the same color. It's not going to matter too much. If you do have a different color that you like for wood, then of course use that instead. You'll notice parts that are going to be a gunmetal color later. I'm just going to go straight over the top of them now, because our gunmetal color will cover perfectly well. Just try and avoid the uh, wrapping parts, because we're going to use quite a light color on those. And we can save ourselves some time by not having to paint over a darker base coat. Now for his pouches, I'm going to use mahogany brown, which is a nice warm reddish leather color. Uh, it's going to look a little bit bright going on, but it will darken as it dries. And of course, we've got to shade it yet. And pay close attention on some of these miniatures. Through the gaps in his cloak, you'll see his webbing instead of his uniform. So it can be a bit of a challenge spotting what's what. Now later on, I am going to use leather brown on his boots. Uh, so if you wanted to save a color, you could just paint his boots and his uh, webbing with leather brown now. It's not, yeah, it's up to you. I like the slightly more reddish look. And now we can start painting his cape. I'm going to use flat earth here. Um, and there is a very good reason for this. Uh, you could use middle stone or khaki, even a, a true green if you wanted to. But I want this fella as a, a faction on the tabletop. I want him to stand out and differentiate 
visually from the British that I've painted, who have quite a lot more green on them. So I'm deliberately sticking with a brown here. Now you'll notice this covers fairly well, but in some of these bigger flat areas, you're probably going to need to come back and give it a second coat. Um, any patches that you want to paint a different color later, try and avoid them. Uh, but don't worry too much if you do accidentally zap them with a bit of brown. Now to introduce a little bit of depth and some texture to the cape, what I'm going to do is dry brush it with some cork brown. I want a slightly woolen finish here. Now, wonderfully enough, you can't really overdo it at this stage. Just try and avoid the, uh, the uniform if you can. Going across any creases or areas of detail. And you might be looking at these patches and wondering, well, what have I gotten planned there? I want them to have a different texture than the cape. So we're going to dry brush that first, and then we'll lay down the uh, base colors for those patches. You can be fairly generous with this, because uh, when we shade it, it's going to look a lot more subtle. Uh, there, take your time, and add a bit of color with some cork brown. Now for those patches, I'm actually going to use a couple of different colors. I'll start with green gray, and this is a nice, uh, slightly washed out sort of canvas looking color. I'm not going to paint all of them with this, but I am going to do most of them with green gray. And at the same time, keep an eye out for any areas on the rest of the uniform which look like a different material. So where ordinarily I've left his trousers and this padded stuff around his leg one color, he's got this big padded knee pad, which I think, yeah, a little bit of gray green, 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 goodness me, this color, whatever it is, <laughs> we're going to paint that in. And for those other patches and odd details, I'm going to use just khaki. So there's this patch on his back here, and this fellow's also got an armband, which looks like he's tying together part of his uniform. This won't stand out terribly much from the uh, uniform as it is, but it'll be enough once we've shaded it to have a little bit of visual interest there. And then for the straps around his rifle, what I've got is medium gray. Now I am trying to stick to the more brown than green idea that I've got in mind. Uh, but again, whatever color you want to use here, uh, you could use the khaki or the green gray. It is up to you. Where Now for his gloves, what I've got is German camo medium brown, which is quite a mouthful, uh, but it will cover fairly well. You may find, on particularly on skin parts, if you have to paint over any bits where you splurged a little, uh, it might need a second coat. Now, I mentioned earlier leather brown, if you did want to do the boots and the webbing the same color, but one way or another, brown those boots in now. Now for any black details, what I have here is actually German gray. Now, it's a very dark blue black, and it works really well for gunmetal and stuff like that. I really like it. Uh, for some of these details, I am going to swap to a slightly smaller brush. There might not be very much of it on your miniature. It's, it's really up to what you're painting. And then we can paint in the metallic parts. Uh, for this I'm going to use, this is actually Lead Belcher from Citadel. But you could use oily steel or gunmetal, any color that works for you. Now this little buckle here, this little buckle here holding his cape on, I'm choosing to paint it in um, the, the straps and buckles, they looked like they were metallic uh, on the Imperial Russian uniforms, so that's what I'm going to do here. But you could swap to a brassy color if you fancied, if you wanted to look a little bit more, a uh, bit more fancy, but uh, I'm going to stick to this. And then our final base coat is going to be his helmet. Now what I've got here, this is brown violet. Uh, you'll also see this labeled as US Olive Drab. Uh, now the history of the helmets in the uh, the real Imperial Russian army is actually quite interesting because the Tsar didn't like his men wearing helmets. He thought it spoiled the martial look of their uniforms. So he had to be convinced in reality to let his men wear helmets into battle. How, how bad is that? They ordered a whole bunch of Adrian helms from the French, which arrived in Horizon Blue. And eventually they would spray them or paint them over whatever they used and make them green. Um, 
Yeah, it's fascinating. Obviously, by the time our fictional 1926 rolls around, the Russians are a little bit more circumspect about helmets. Now, with all of your base coats applied, if you need to go back and tidy any of them up, now's the time. You'll save a bit of time if you save that stage till last. What I'm going to do now, though, is to shade him. Now, Vallejo recently changed the formulation on their game color range, and the washes is one of those that they changed as well. Uh, umber wash here, this is quite close to Agrax Earthshade, maybe a little bit lighter. And I picked it up and gave it a try because I hadn't painted any Russians before. I thought, why not give it a shot? And I'm so glad I did. Um, I'll show you why. First off, let's get a couple of drops of this into my palette. And then same procedure as always, fill up your brush and start really working this into the recesses, covering the entire miniature. Now, the easiest way I can think to explain how this goes on is that it, it applies and flows a little bit more like the original Agrax Earthshade did. Uh, but if you give it a couple of seconds to settle, it moves and settles on the miniature more like the Army Painter's Strong Tone does. And I don't know if that makes any sense to you, but it's, it's brilliant. I've really enjoyed using this stuff. So I'm going to bucket the entire miniature with this and then give them about half an hour to dry, see what we get. Now the other thing that I know that a lot of you are going to like about that uh, wash is that it dries super matte. And isn't that a nice finish? I really like how that turns out. We'll move on now and we'll start doing some highlights. I'm going to start with his skin. And of course, how you paint skin is really up to you, but I'm going to use Cadian Flesh Tone to paint in most of his skin again and leave just a little bit of the uh, tanned flesh shaded in the recesses. Now, particularly on his knee as well, I must remember that too. And then with some Kislev flesh, I'm going to highlight just his nose, his cheekbones, and his top lip. Which will of course be much easier without a camera in my way, but that's not something you'll have to worry about. <laughs> If you've still got a bit of green-grey on your uh, palette, go ahead and you can start edging in the uh, helmet itself. You don't have to do the whole thing, but just a couple of areas to make the uh, dents look a little more three-dimensional. And same with the scratches. Now for the ropes and what have you that are holding the straps on his uh, extra gear, I'm going to use here, this is Pale Sand. Now, on the other fellas that you would have seen at the start of the video, I actually used Dark Sand instead. And uh, I don't think it gave me quite enough contrast with what I'm going to highlight his uniform with. So instead, let's turn to Dark Sand. Now this is going to be an interminable faff. Uh, it's quite a lot of work. These straps are fairly narrow. But you'll notice just a tiny bit of paint on my brush at a time gives me a bit more control. So uh, if you do want to spend the time and make this look quite nifty, then knock yourself out, but take it slow, and yeah, little bits at a time. Now I was right, that did turn out to be a lot of extra faff, a lot of extra work, uh, but it looks cool. So yeah, I'm going to leave the other guys in the dark sand that I used the first time so that you can see the difference. Uh, but yeah, pale sand would be my choice for those straps. Now for highlighting his uniform, what I'm going to use, this is US Army Tank Crew Highlight from the Panzer Aces line. Now if you can get Vallejo paints, uh, they will almost certainly stock the Panzer Aces or have access to them at the same place. So whether you're ordering online or going to a store, just ask if you can grab the Panzer Aces stuff. Uh, US Tank Crew is a wonderful color. And yeah, it doesn't take much to flick in the edges of this padded jacket. Now, don't feel like you have to highlight everything, but a little bit of contrast between some of the jacket, which is intact, and uh, the ruined parts will look quite cool. Now the other great thing about that color is you can mix it in about half and half with your green-gray, and now we've got the highlight for the uh, smaller patches that we did. So just little flicky lines along the edges of these. You'll notice we get something that looks like a different material to our cape. 
And the same principle will apply with the khaki. Just a little mix of that highlight color in, and you've got the perfect highlight for a nice natural transition of color. We'll go back now to that cork brown from earlier. And what we're going to do is I'll thin this down a little bit and just pick a few areas on the cape itself that I want to look a little sharper. So edges, extreme curves in the folds, that sort of thing. A little bit of this cork brown over the color that we've already used is going to straighten things out and look a bit sharper. So you don't have to go crazy with this uh, because we have already got most of the highlighting that we need for the cape to look cool. But just a little bit extra here and there uh, will make it look a bit nicer, I would say. So pick the bits you want. And your dry brush is actually going to help you quite a bit because it's more or less going to tell you where <laughs> those highlights ought to go. And then finally, if you do want to highlight his uh, pouches at all, just a little bit of red leather will do the job here. Violently assault your camera with your brush before you do it, that'll help a lot. Uh, but just the shape of these has quite pronounced little bulges either side of them, so it's a little bit difficult to show you on camera with the angle that he's at, but real quick to highlight these. Now one final note, uh, if you do want to highlight his gloves, then what I'd suggest would be German Camo Light Brown. Um, after having done it on the other fellas though, I don't really think it adds that much to the miniature, so we're going to skip that. Even though this has dried quite matte, uh, I would still recommend a matte varnish is a good idea. So I've got here, this is uh, Varnish Plus from Instar. And then once this is dried, Grab yourself a soft pencil. Uh, I've got here a B. You can use a 2B. It's probably a better choice, a little bit softer. And what I'm going to do is just rough it up on a bit of paper first. Uh, you could also use sandpaper for this if you really want to make sure it's rough. And then just buff it lightly along the gunmetal. And you'll get a nice subtle uh, highlight there. And how easy is that? So what I'm going to do now is to base them up in the same way as I have the British Rifleman that I already painted. Now I'm going to link to that guide uh, because this one's probably running a little bit longer by now and I have already done snow basing. So I'll pop down the recipe in the description all the same, but if you want to see me actually do it, um, go check out the British Rifleman for that. And there alongside his grimy buddies, our Russian Rifleman is complete. And here you can see the differences in those colors I mentioned. The two fellas who are kneeling, they have the dark sand on their uh, cords versus the pale sand that I used on the standing fella. And I really think the pale sand makes more of a difference. So hopefully something there was interesting to you. Uh, in particular, I love the fact that the Gloom Trench Rangers, uh, both the Russians that are coming and the English guys that are already there, are designed so that they're compatible with a pretty wide variety of games Wink. <laughs> and uh, with the Astra Militarum Codex on pre-order, it seemed pretty timely that these guys are coming too. So thanks again to the team at Fickle Dice for sending me these guys along to have a play with. I really had a lot of fun. And thank you as well to Exit 23 Games for the light and sound equipment, and all of the wonderful patrons who are keeping me ticking in paints and glue, including my producers Alan Nuttall, Kyrie Crawford, Rod, Andrew, and Jimmy. Your support, folks, let me keep buying resin. Now, any questions or anything, feel free to drop them in the old comment box below. As I just stutter a little bit there. Uh, my Instagram and Twitter are both linked there too. So thank you very much for your time, folks, and you all enjoy the rest of your day.